Hi, welcome to day five. Um, this is going to be a long video. I have a lot of things to talk about and first off, um, let me tell you, I've had a few replies to some of my videos and I'm going to do a tutorial for you today. Uh, first off, let me give a shout out to uh, screen name Val Sparkles. She's a new face painter. She wants to learn a little bit more. She's a beginner. So I'm going to show her a couple of little things. Okay. Um, first off, you probably already know this, Val, but uh, to do face painting, you need sponges, paint, brushes, water, which is down here, spray bottle with water, because you don't want to dip your sponges too much, because that'll dirty up your water too much. Okay. A rag to wipe off your brushes, clean up mistakes, and different things. I'd also suggest having uh, baby wipes and stuff for, you know, those small little mistakes. Now, um, along with this, Val, I'm going to be showing a uh, screen name, The Rubber Skin, who requested a snow leopard tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to do a snow leopard tutorial, and then I'm going to go on to a few other things in here. Um, I'm going to be using only two colors this time. All right, I do have a third color, but I'll introduce that later. So the first color I have is Wolf. If you can see it, it's Wolf White and Wolf Black. Um, wolf Face Art and Effects is, has some of the best paints out there. Um, Nick and Brian Wolf were the ones who first introduced the um, paints, but uh, there was some problems in the company and they separated out from it and uh, that's another story for another time. You can talk, comment, ask questions later. Um, but for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spray bottle and my white I'm going to just spray it on the inside. Yeah, my spray bottle is not working. So I'm going to do a wolf technique. I'm going to dip just the end of my sponge into the water, get it a little wet, squeeze out any excess I have in there, and then I'm going to pick up the white. This is for you, uh, the rubber skin. <laughs> so I hope you're watching. I dip just enough in there to pick up some more water and I put it in to where I get enough white on my sponge to completely cover my whole face. Now I know some people say dab and twist, uh, don't streak because it'll leave streak marks in it and stuff. What I do is I smear the whole thing on and then I go back and I blot it in. I'll show you. Here, watch. Okay, hold the hair back. Make sure you get every little thing. I know it looks kind of rough right now. I'm not sure how it looks exactly on the camera. But if you notice, I did not have to pick up any more paint. I was able to use just the amount that I had on my sponge. Now, I'm doing a little stippling to kind of get rid of those streak marks. Now I'm trying to do this in a limited amount of time. I don't want to take a lot of time on this because there is a lot of things I have to say. So I'm just going to do this as quickly as possible. I want this to be a five minute face. It'll probably be a little bit longer than five minutes but that's okay. Over time you can get better with it. Okay, so now we got the white on. Using a different sponge. The reason I'm going to use a different sponge is because I have white on this side. I use the white on one end to apply it. I use a clean side to blend, smudge, smear, whatever I have to do 
and use one sponge per color. So I'm going to use another sponge, get a little wet. I haven't used my sponges in a while. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of black. Not a lot. And this this will be where I show you what the back end is for. Now, if you have too much in excess, blot it on your towel. Okay? This will help take off too much excess. Now, this is for contouring. I'm going to use this to define certain areas and shadow and everything else. Okay? So, I'm going to start up at the forehead and I'm going to do a little shadowing right up there and you see how I use the back end that's going to allow it to bleed now if you see that the white's been messed up you can go over it with a little bit of white I'm going to do the other side Okay, then I'm going to do just in the temples a little bit. I'm going to do a little around the cheekbone. And I'm going to do right in the corner of my eyes to kind of darken them out a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to do a muzzle effect with this too. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to right where the corner of the eye is you're going to come down and it's going to make a rounded part right around the corner of the mouth all right that's going to be your muzzle The reason I'm doing this is it's giving shadow, it's giving depth and dimension. Now I don't usually use a small brush, I'll, I'll use this brush. It's a nice fat round, um, this is a number 8, Craft Smart. I got this from Michaels, okay? They come in packs of four, four different sizes, and it's like $4.99, they're really cheap. They um, do hold the paint really well, they do hold the shape really good and stuff. They usually come with white bristles, but after a while you'll notice that they don't stay white. Okay, so I'm going to just take this, number eight, the fat one, I'm going to put it in my black paint until it's not as liquidy. I, I don't want it to be real liquidy. I want it to be a paste almost, a you know loose consistency where it'll go on, but um, it won't run down the face. Okay, so now I'm going to do the underside of my eyes first. Okay, now I'm going to do the top side nose, muzzle, lips, and then I'm going to do the detail, and you'll, you'll see how it comes out. Okay, so don't worry about the cat's eye points just yet. To do that, you can close one eye and just pull it out. Okay, this isn't perfect. Okay, close the eye, line the top. Do a little fan out, get that little cat eye part. Even on guys, it's fine. It's not going to kill them. Alright, 
I'm just going to go back in and pick up a little bit more of the wet paint that's in there. I'm going to do the nose. The nose can be any shape you want as long as it's just the tip of it, okay? Now, there are several different ways people do it. There are several different ways people do muzzles. This is the way I do it, okay? So don't get confused. Don't worry about it. I mean, there's plenty of books out there like uh, Nick and Brian Wolf from uh, Evil Twin FX now. You can go to their website, EvilTwinFX.com, and I'll put all the links down here at the bottom, okay? They have their extreme face painting, 50 fiendishly friendly faces, uh, friendly and fiendish faces, and it comes with two demos on a DVD. Um, let me pull out the DVD so you can see what it looks like. It's a really great book. I guarantee you're going to learn a lot from them. All right, so let me do the nose. and go right down into the lip, okay? Then you're gonna line your lip first. Now if you notice, I didn't do the whole lip. It would make it too big, too pronounced and stuff. Leave a little bit of white underneath, leave it so it you know gives it depth and dimension, okay? You don't have to do that little pointed thing on the mouth unless you want to. I usually do, so. And that'll give a fuller effect if you don't paint the whole upper lip. Now, I go from the bottom corner up, and if you notice, I don't have a steady hand. My hand does shake a lot, okay? But with practice, you can do this. Okay, so you get the muzzle. Then you want to make a few little lines, usually where the whiskers go. Okay. And you can add dots to it. Give it a more realistic. Now, don't confuse a cheetah with a leopard. A cheetah has spots. A leopard has spots, but aren't completely closed. They're not solid spots. Now. I'm going to do half my face like a regular cheetah, the other half I'm going to use leopard spots on, and that way you can really see. Now I'm also going to define out the brow line and give it more dimension and stuff, okay? So this is something you can modify with all types of different designs and different things. This is the basis also for a tiger face if you want to do it using you know yellow or orange in the middle with an orange or brown on the top and you know you can blend in the colors to really make it match to what a tiger looks like but this is the basis for all cat faces once you get this done details all around the side okay so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do spots for a cheetah okay I know the rubber skin wants to know it's no leopard tutorial Okay, I'm going to do a snow leopard and cheetah spots just just so Val Sparkles knows the difference between the spots because you don't want to get them confused. So on this half I'm going to do cheetah dots. Now I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do a big dot. And they don't have to be perfect. No spots are ever perfect. 
So if you have to pick up some more water, go ahead and do it. But the one thing you need to learn is as you get closer to the center of the face, the dots get smaller. So you don't want them to be big the whole time. You want them to frame it out and you want to be able to just get some cool spot designs on there. And I usually put a little dot right there. So that's more of a cheetah spot. You don't have to make it perfect, okay? N nothing in life is perfect. All right? Now, the other side, I'm going to do leopard spots. Now, leopard spots usually come in a consistency of one, two, three um, dots that form a dot itself. And I'll show you how. Now, I'm going to start off in the middle up here, and we're going to start off with big dots around the side and go to smaller dots on the inside, all right? So with the bigger dots, you just give a little wiggle, and you have a spot. That's a leopard spot, okay? So we'll do a few more. Don't have to be perfect. Just as long as it shows that it's enclosing a space. Sometimes you can just take dots and do it like that. A set of three dots really pops it out. They usually come down to, you know, just putting a few little dots just down. So, I hope this is helping you out. I know it's one of the most popular faces as a cat face to do. And to do this tutorial for you guys, you know, um, I really enjoy because my favorite animal is a cat. That's why I'm Cat Man Do. And as you see, I have the spots going down. So you can really put spots any which way you like. Now, the one thing with this is you can use silver, you can use a gray color. You can use something to darken in the middle of them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different. This is where my water gets dirty because I have to rinse out my brush. I'm going to use this Wolf Metallic Blue. Okay? I'm just going to use this, for example, to show you the inside of the spots. And just because it's going to show up better on the video, too. But uh, this is a very popular color with the girls, especially when you're doing eye designs and butterflies and different things. But I'm just going to kind of wiggle on the inside of each little spot that I created, just so it pops it out. It makes it more noticeable as a spot. Because without this, it's just going to look like a whole bunch of random dots that didn't really form into anything. And that should be it. Now, as I said, if you want to define and you want to make this look like an angry cat, there's a little trick you can do. Just pick up a little bit of black paint on your brush. Don't make them bold. Just take it from the inside where the eyebrow is and bring it up. This creates a frown frown line or frown effect and you can do your frowns any which way you want and you can put the wrinkles in where the nose is so people know and that's how you get oh the mean you can also put teeth in Which, if you already have a white base, you really don't have to worry about the teeth. But if you're using like an orange or yellow or something like that, paint them on the in outline them first in black. 
then paint them on the inside with white. That's what the Wolf Brothers tell you. You know why? Because then you don't blend the colors as much and you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, the white, or I don't know how to say it, but you get the general point. So here you go, uh, the rubber skin. Snow Leopard, Snow Cheetah, same difference. Do whatever you want, make it any which way you want and just have fun with it. Um, make sure you wash your sponges out when you're done. Use a little bit of, um, I use uh, dish soap. It'll clear it out really good. And um, I showed you an example with wolf paints. But I have gained a new sponsor and she is sending me product on the way. Um, Diamond FX is going to be sponsoring me in some of these videos and they're going to be sending me some products to try out um, let you know what they're like, uh, critique them, review them. Uh, if they're not good, I'm going to tell you. But the Wolf Brothers use them, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to like them, and I'll tell you all about it, and I'll be doing some different designs and some tutorials using Diamond Effects. So look out for those videos in the future, okay? Now, now that I'm done with all of this, and um, if you see me looking over to the side, it's because I have a cheat sheet up on the um, mirror here. That way I know exactly where to go and I don't miss anything in this video. So I've already talked about all of that. Okay, one of the biggest things coming up at the end of January, January 27th through the 30th of 2002, up uh, near Washington, D.C., is the Capitol Convention. Capitol Kidvention. Put a .com at the end and you can go to their website. It's um, put together by Child Time Magic and the registration for it is $169. They're keeping it at that right now. So you don't have to worry about it raising up. Um, I got in on the early bird special which was $169. I got an email later saying that it wasn't going to go up anymore. They're going to keep it at $169 and see how many people they can get this year. They want to make it bigger and better. Some of the names on the list uh, of presenters who are going to be there, Nick and Brian Wolf, Brady Naher, Tara Fender with Bella Rouge Designs in North Carolina, Jane Keller with Sparkled Designs, uh, Carrie Ann Smith, um, About Face 2, and uh, Lynn Cole from Lynn Cole Body Art. Now I'm going to post all these links at the bottom down here so that you can go to them. Now, Val, you can actually get a lot of these products, you know, the sponges, the brushes, um, water bottle here, one that works, a paint tray, okay, with two well paint tray to hold your brushes in and to clean out your brushes. So that way you can have dirty water and clean water. You can get all this from Michaels, okay, you can go to michaels.com and uh, order it there or you can go to your local Michaels uh, arts and craft store in your area or in a nearby city if they have one and you can buy all this stuff really inexpensive. If you don't have any of that, there are several different websites you can go to. And if you go to my website, katmanduefba.webs.com, and I'll put that link at the bottom down there too, they will, um, there will be different places to go to to buy this stuff too. In fact, one of the best places to go if you're a face painter and to get all the different products all in one spot and all the different uh, items that you need is sillyfarm.com spelled exactly as it sounds, sillyfarm.com. They are the main face and body art distributor for the whole United States and most of the world, too. Um, there are different products out there that you won't find on their website, but most of the time you will find all their stuff there. So, And I'll put a Silly Farm link at the bottom down here, too. So, with that being said, um, check out Capital Convention if you are a face painter or if you are a beginner because this is a great place to go to. Um, they'll be having uh, pre-show workshops that you know range anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars, and then they'll do. Uh, they have one on Monday for an after a post-show, post-convention workshops, and uh, Nick and Brian Wolf will have one uh, on Monday. Um, go to their website. That's in down here and they'll tell you all about it 
And um, let me see, other than that, oh, if you want to stay at the convention, if you don't want to have a hotel room outside the area, uh, Capital Convention website will tell you more about it and everything that you get. The price per night is the same as the registration. It's $169 a night, but you get breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the amenities, snacks, free Starbucks all day long, a um, whole bunch of other stuff. You get to stay at the convention there and stuff. Now, $169 a night does seem like a lot, but if you look at everything that it comes with, that's a really good price. Now. If you're smart, you get a roommate and there's two of you in the room and then you only spend, you know, half that per person per night and you really save a lot of money. So what is that? That's $170 a night. So, you know, half of that is what? 170 is uh, $85. So $85 per person, you know, if you're rooming up with two, you know, you can go up to four people in a room. So you can really cut down your cost on this, find yourself a roommate. But other than that, this is the end of my day five video. Rate, comment, subscribe. You can take a look at uh, yesterday's videos right here. You can take a look at tomorrow's video right here when it gets posted. It's just gonna be a link with nowhere to go. So, um, other than that, I'm also looking for more sponsors. If you wanna have your product placed on my website, if you wanna have it um, advertised here, contact me. There's several different ways you can do it. Phone, email, website, all that you can find in the links section down below where I'm going to be placing all of them. And um, if you have a product or a service that you want me to talk about, contact me and we'll work out a way for you to do it. Um, very minimal cost and stuff. But uh, this is a great way so I don't have to keep looking into a regular digital camera and do this so I can finally get out there, buy what I need to get a you know, high definition camera, a better computer to process all this video power so that I can really make some great videos for you. But this is the end of day five. Thank you for watching and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Thank you very much. Bye.